Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And this was sent in from a loyal subscriber. So thank you so much, Alan, for sharing this problem with me. And we have here the indefinite integral of x to the fourth over x to the sixth plus one squared dx. Now, as I work through the problem, I'm going to show a lot more steps in between. Alan sent me a very elegant solution. I'm just doing this so I can really break things down for all the viewers. And I hope everyone enjoys this lovely integral as much as I did. So the first thing I'm going to do to kind of help get the ball rolling is distribute the exponent that's squared. And let's write the numerator as x to the eighth. And then the denominator, just leave it as x to the sixth plus one quantity squared dx. And then hopefully at this point, if you play around with it a little bit, you can see that it's going to be nice if we make a u substitution. So let's go ahead. We can let u equal x cubed. And you might say, wait a minute, how is that going to help us? I don't see any x cubes. Well, hold on a second. u squared would be x cubed squared, which is x to the sixth. Perfect. And then remember, when we make a u substitution, we have to find du. In this case, that would be 3x squared dx. And we pretty much have that. Remember, I can rewrite this numerator as x to the sixth times x squared dx. And then now maybe you're getting more excited about the u substitution. Oh, yes. And then x to the sixth plus one, that's x cubed squared plus one squared. Can you see it now? Exactly. So one third du is x squared dx. That's right there. That's going to be one third du. And then who's this? This is u squared plus 1. And then all of that squared. This extra x to the 6th, no problem. Who's this? That's just u squared. Okay, so we're good to go. So we've got 1 third. That x to the 6th is u squared. x squared dx, that's part of the 1 third du. And then in the denominator now, x cubed, that's just u. So we've got u squared plus 1 quantity squared. How are we doing? Okay, so what would you do from this step? Typically, you'd probably think, oh, let me find the partial fraction decomposition, right? Because here we have rational expression as the integrand, degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator. So yeah, that's fine. But you know, I'm always looking for a way out of partial fractions if it can be helped, if you can avoid it. And since we only have this one little term in the numerator, and it's matching the denominator so closely, let's play around with it so that we can avoid some partial fractions because why not? So how are we going to avoid it? We're going to come in and we're going to add one and subtract one in the numerator and then simplify from there. And we're going to get the same result as if we had sat there and done partial fractions. So you add one and subtract one because you want to get an expression that matches what's in the denominator. And we're going to split this up now into two terms. So we're going to have one third integral u squared plus one over u squared plus 1 squared minus 1 over u squared plus 1 squared du. How are we doing? We're great, Professor V. Oh, good. Okay, so then this is going to be 1 third times the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 to the first now, right? Because this just cancels out with one of these. And then minus 1 over u squared plus 1 squared don't forget parentheses, du. Beautiful. So at this point, we're going to divide and conquer. This is going to be integral number one. We'll work on it. And then this is going to be integral number two. I'll reintroduce the one third later. So integral number one is one over u squared plus one du. Hopefully this takes no work. Just you should have put to memory. This is going to be tan inverse of u plus I'm going to put c1 so we can save the c for the final answer. Okay, that was painless. Integral number two, one over u squared plus one squared du. No, this does not just jump straight to tan inverse because notice the denominator is squared. So what do we do in this scenario? Why yes, we trig sub. So we're gonna let u equal one tan theta, which means du is secant squared theta d theta. Good. So then we're going to have here integral 1 over u squared will now be tan squared theta plus 1. All of this is squared. 
And then du is secant squared beta d theta. Lovely, lovely. Okay, and then remember the whole point of doing your trig sub is to use your Pythagorean identity. So tan squared theta plus one, that's secant squared theta. And then all of that is squared in the denominator. So I've got secant squared theta d theta up top, and then secant to the fourth theta in the denominator. So that'll cancel, that's one over secant squared theta d theta. But who's one over secant squared? Yes, it's our good friend, cosine squared theta. Good. And then anytime you see sine squared or cosine squared in your integral and you have to take its antiderivative and there's nothing else with it, right? There's no u sub root other options. You're going to replace it with 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Don't dilly-dally and play around with any other identities. Okay. Then we can integrate term by term. This is going to be 1 half times theta plus 1 half sine 2 theta plus c2. Very good. And then from here, we know we're going to want to go back to the original variable we had earlier, which was u. And remember, we had made the substitution. We let u equal tan theta, which is the same as saying u over 1 is tan theta, right? So if we draw a triangle, our little theta triangle, make sure tangent of that theta is 1, so opposite over adjacent is 1. Then the hypotenuse is rad u squared plus 1. Good. Now what does that mean for us? Well, this is a theta triangle, not a 2 theta triangle. So you're going to replace sine 2 theta with 2 sine theta cosine theta. But that's, that's just lovely, because look, the 1 half and the 2 will cancel. So now we have 1 half theta plus, that 1 half is going to distribute sine theta cosine theta plus C2. And then we can use our triangle and get back to the original variable. So 1 half, when you have that plain old theta, you go back to, well, what trig function did I choose for my trig sub? Tangent theta. So theta all by its lonesome would be tan inverse of u plus one half. Okay, now sine theta, use your triangle. It's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that'll be u over rad u squared plus one. And then cosine theta, again, use the triangle ratio of adjacent, which is one over hypotenuse. That's rad u squared plus one plus c2. Okay, good. So then from here, if we clean up a little bit, this is one half tan inverse of u plus one half u over, notice those radicals will cancel out. This is just u squared plus one plus c2. Okay, so we finished up the second integral. Are you ready to put it all together? Yes, I am, this is exciting. Okay, so the first integral was tan inverse of u and then we had plus C1, don't worry about it. And then we had minus all of this stuff. So minus one half tan inverse of u, minus one half u over u squared plus one. And then all of this was times a one third. And then now I'm gonna put plus C and we have to tell the people who is the C. Well, C is one third times C1 minus C2, okay. And then before you get too excited, we can clean up quite a bit more. Notice we've got tan inverse of u minus one half tan inverse of u, so those can be combined. So we've got one third times one half tan inverse of u minus one half times u over u squared plus one plus c. Oh, I mean, isn't that one half just begging to be factored out? I think so, so one sixth and then remember, the original variable, we made a substitution at the beginning of the problem. We had let u be x cubed. So let's go back there. So we have tan inverse now of u, which is x cubed, minus x cubed over u squared, that would be x to the sixth, plus 1 plus c. And voila, let's box it with pride. That is lovely. So I hope you enjoyed solving this one as much as I did. Thank you again, Alan, for sending it to me. I thought it was such a great problem and good level for the classes that I teach. Like it's a good one for Calc too. 
And let me know in the comments how you solved it. If you did the same approach or if you did something differently. Did you just do the partial fractions? Do you not like doing plus one, minus one? I think you should start to practice that little technique because it will be such a time saver in the future. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and if you need help with any of the topics that were covered in this video, like trig sub and other integration techniques, then I have videos linked in the description or check out the playlist on my YouTube channel. I have everything organized by course, like Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, like that. I even have differential equations, um, pre-calculus, some trig, and whatnot. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. 